Fire and Earth podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Gruber. Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth podcast. I am your host, Kathy Gruber. And I'm Jason Mefford. How are you all doing today? Are you ready for another great day? Well, we hope so. And today, I hope so, too. We're- we're going to help make it even better. Now, um, one of the things that, how how are we we going to do that? Well, I think we're going to talk about something that's old fashioned. I know. Oh, oh, well, kind of like that, you know, maybe going back to the horse and buggy days. (laughs) I'm quite sure where I got horses. (laughs) (laughs) Not the horses are old fashioned, but I was thinking. And and some people might be thinking that, right, when I when I tell everybody what the topic is going to be that we're going to discuss today, because people are probably thinking, what? Uh-huh. And so let's talk a little bit about time management. And the reason is because of how lack of time management leads to stress. Yeah. Oh, right? Oh, the S um, word. The S word. The, yeah, the other S word. Probably uh-huh. worse than the other S word, right? Right, right. Um, cause yeah, what I've, what I have, um, kind of seen in my own life and I've seen with my clients and people that I know as well is, um, you know, a lot of times we're stressed out and a lot of the source of that stress comes from, uh, our inability to kind of manage our time. And, uh, and so, so let's go through and talk about that. Cause I'm, you know, I've been thinking about this and it's like, I mean, I'm a big nerd, you know, when I was younger back in the eighties, I was, Ooh, you know, in the eighties, I, you know, I had a Franklin day planner and I would plan out my day and my month and my week and, you know, was reading all the books about time management and everything then and, um, uh, kind of realized, you know, a lot of people aren't talking too much about that. Um, even though that is probably one of the big sources of stress in people's lives. So what do you think? Talk a little bit about time management. I I think we absolutely should talk about time management. And here's how it's different from the 80s, though I think the fashion has come back around. But the time management thing is a little bit different because I remember when I was a kid, sure the 80s will go with that uh you know you had to do business between nine and five if you needed to get your watch repaired if you needed to call a business if you needed to you had to do it between nine and five or ten and six or now it should be easier because if i want to contact someone at 11 o'clock at night i can but I think that has also confounded the issue because we are so inundated with things all the time. So inundated with do it now, do it now, do it now. It's the tyranny of the urgent of we put the exact same importance on everything. So how are we deciding what needs to be done? And I know if you guys remember back to our goal setting um, episode, we talked about you know making stuff into smaller doable bits and looking at this whole gigantic thing can be a little overwhelming. It's the eating the elephant thing. Elephants, horses, boy, it's just sort of a nature episode. Bring the guinea pig in in a second. But it, it's true the same thing with time. What are we prioritizing? And I was hearing a speaker talking about our cell phones and it was hilarious. She said, how many of you are addicted to your cell phones? And like a couple people raise their hand. She goes, right, I know. How many of you have a friend addicted to their cell phone? And everybody <laughs> raised their hand. And she said, you may be wondering how you know if you're addicted to your cell phone. Well, do you sleep with your phone? Now, let me explain. When I say sleep with your phone, you're probably wondering, well, do you mean in the bed, on the nightstand, on the floor, or across the room? And she said, let's put it this way. If you have beer overnight in your bed, on the nightstand, on the floor, across the room, don't you have a problem? (laughs) (laughs) If the bottle's there, so you just have to reach out. We we all kind of went, yeah. But what that has to do with time management is, and I'm guilty of this, I wake up in the morning, what's the first thing I do? Oh my God, like what's going on? That puts everybody else's needs above ours. That means we're answering their email. We're looking at their Facebook stuff, you know, and what she was explaining is wake up, first of all, do an inventory and get yourself put together before you dive into work. That's not healthy either. But also if we are tied to the phones to the point where 
everybody else's needs supersede our own, it's going to mess with our time management. And I'm with you. I still have a book, an actual physical book with a pen mm -hmm. that I write my appointments and stuff down in because I want to see that I'm a visual, visual kinesthetic person. Um, so, but it's about maximizing that time and not being a slave to social media, a slave to everybody else's needs and how we prioritize what is important to us. So what is your, uh, what is your first thought on that, Jason? Well, yeah, I mean, totally, because it's, it's um, the changes, like you said, and this is what's important, you know, because I kind of talk about this in risk management stuff, too, is that when the landscape changes, right, there's these new forces or sources that come on, you have to modify what you're doing because the environment has changed. And so, like you said, you know, we all are connected 24-7, you know, we, 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 I guess I sleep with my phone too, right? Because I have a sleep app that, uh, you know, monitors my sleep levels and wakes me up in the morning. Um, but it's, imp it's important for us. And this is where, again, like I said, I've seen so many people that they just get so stressed, so wound up because they feel like they're always on. And so we'll go through and talk about, I've got a couple of tips for people today, but um, since you kind of started off too with, with the morning, um, this is, I, I think, a big thing that, that um, here, here's a big tip for you to take away, uh, is limit your screen time in the morning, right? So, you know, yeah, your phone might wake you up from your alarm or other things like that, but the morning time is usually such an important time for you to get started with the rest of your day that if the first thing you do when you get up is you check Facebook, you check emails, you check messages, then before your body has really been able to, and your mind is awake, you're already getting pulled in all these different directions. Yep. And, and I'm just as guilty of this as everybody else. So let me kind of share with you what I went through and how kind of changing morning routine actually helped me. So probably one of the most stressful parts in, in my career of recent was probably a um, year, between a year and two years ago. And, um, and the problem was what I would do is again, first thing I would do in the morning, um, I was doing a lot of work internationally. Mm -hmm. And so when you work with people internationally, the problem is, you know, they're working when you're asleep. And, and so I was having meetings literally all the time, right? So I'd, I'd get up early in the morning so that I could talk to people in, in Europe. And then I'd stay up late at night to talk to people in Asia or the Middle East. And so I was having these, these calls and discussions all the time and they were sending me messages all the time too, right? And so when I would first wake up, I'd check messages and then all of the, right? Of what was gonna come in for the day was coming into my mind and the last thing I did before I went to bed was check and respond to messages too. So the problem was it was messing with my sleep cycles as well, plus all the jet lag. Um, b because of that, and, and so, you know, it not only affected, it affected me physically, my health, as well as kind of my psyche. And so, you know, if you find yourself doing that and, you know, you, you get amped up, you know, before you even have breakfast or your cup of coffee or whatever you're doing to begin with, the rest of the day is probably going to be amped up too. And so it's better to take some time for yourself in the morning, uh, get some sort of a routine, right, uh, on, on things that you can actually do or, or maybe some of those things that you want to accomplish each day. And so you need to take that little bit of time for you um, and have a morning routine. You know, I'm, I'm a one for checklists too. So I've got, a little, <laughs> I've got a little checklist over here that has the five or six things that I want to do every morning or at least during the day. Some of those I do in the morning before I get started and others I, I fit in during the day, depending on, you know, what I have going on. Um, and I found that, you know, if I get up in the morning and do my morning routine, which is, you know, for me, it's, it's reading through some affirmations. It's looking at my goals that I have. Uh, it's doing some of the visualization. It's taking a little bit of time to meditate uh, it's going out for a run. You know, when I do some of those things first thing in the morning, the rest of the day, I'm so much more productive. Sure. And, and it's amazing because even yesterday, you know, I, I noticed about, 
halfway through the day, I got a little flat. And, and so I was sitting there, you know, trying to do some introspection, like, okay, what, what was different? Why am I feeling flat? Why am I feeling this way? And realized I didn't go on my run yesterday morning. Uh, right. So I replaced that. I thought, well, there's this other stuff that I have to get done. And so realized that, you know what, if I would have spent the half hour, 45 minutes going for the run in the morning, yeah. I, I probably lost that much in productivity later in the day because I, I, I didn't have my, my body and mind kind of tuned uh, for the sure. day ahead. So, Well, and this, this is a really great point because you figure with any project, with any relationship, with any conversation, it's that you don't have a second chance to make a first impression thing. What we do that first, geez, even two to, minutes to half hour in the morning, that sets up the rest of our day. That sets the tone. That sets the pacing. So if you wake up and you jump out of bed and you're like, oh, I got to do all this stuff, oh, and you're immediately on social media, which is this, this, boom, 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 that's setting your pace for the day. And one, you're probably going to burn out pretty darn fast because you can't keep up that level of cortisol and adrenaline and you can't keep that up all day. No. We have these cycles of these hormones and these energy levels. Um, and the other thing is, you're again at the mercy of other people and um, my routine I do tend to look at my phone first one that I use that as a clock and I do know there are actual clocks that aren't on your phone I do know that there's alarms other than my phone but what? people have said you know you can buy one of those yeah I know I'm a child of the age I know um, I flip through my phone my emails just to see if there is anything I need to deal with is there something that is urgent? Is there a uh, someone who hired me as a speaking gig saying, oh my God, I need your bio now, or oh, I got to do this thing now. And if not, and typically it's not, I have the ability then to put that down, to not turn my computer on for a while and have a little more relaxing morning. If there, sometimes there are things that are urgent. I mean, let's face it, we are a global, you know, like you said, dealing with things in different time zones. Us here in California, East Coast has been up for three hours already. Mm -hmm. So if I wake up and I see something came in from the person who hired me for that speaking gig in New York, I need to get on it because there are three hours ahead. So their end of day, very different than our end of day or England or Europe, you know, wherever. Uh, but I use it more as a calibration of what's my morning going to look like? And I can base things off of that. Uh, but I think it's really important to set ourselves up with that morning routine, whether it's you know, making your coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker, but it's a, it's a clear ritual for a lot of friends of mine. They make their coffee, they mm -hmm. play with cats, they go outside and they sit on the deck with their coffee. They have that moment to start the day. And I think it's also really important throughout the day to track those cycles to know when your highest ener energy levels are. I tend to get jazzed at night. So I will come home and I will start to do speaker proposals and things at eight, nine at night, because that's when I feel the energy to do it. The morning for me, not my most productive time. I mean, I'm not a sloth, but it's not when my brain is working the best. I get jazzed as the day goes on. So knowing whether, what do they call it, an owl or a rooster? What is it, an owl or a rooster? Mm -hmm. People who are morning people and evening people. Yep. Knowing what you are, knowing when your energy levels are, if you are the most focused at two o'clock in the afternoon, save those activities that need the most focus yep. for two o'clock in the afternoon. And that goes back to something that we talk about a lot, which is that self-awareness mm -hmm. and knowing yourself, knowing your energy levels, knowing your boundaries. And also, I know we've mentioned this before too, is you know taking breaks, getting up, changing your location, changing your focus, going outside taking deep breaths and I'm in an NLP course right now. And one of the things they were talking about is, you know, at least every hour you need to take some time to get out of what your situation is and decent, I call it de you know, decentrate for a while. We can only concentrate for so long. Now the danger of that, the dark side of that is social media. <laughs> you get sucked Where in. Get on, you get sucked in and suddenly five hours has gone by and you're like, I just go watch one more cat video or people at Walmart's really funny, you know, and suddenly, you know, hours have gone by and you're still, you're on page 632 of people at Walmart. Not that I've ever done that. Would never do that. It's not what I do. Uh, not admitting to anything, but you know, so we do have to find that balance. And if you find yourself getting that sucked into this time suck of social media, there are apps and programs that you can put on your computer that turns it off. Yep. That gives you 20 minutes 
and you're done and it turns it off so you can't get back into it. So, you know, if you don't have the self-control, which I know a lot, or the news, God, everyone's watching the news like crazy now. So you have to put boundaries on that so that you can be productive, but make sure you take breaks. There's that, that, that balance thing we always mention. Well, that's where it kind of comes back into the time management side of it, right? Is that um, there, there's lots of things that are going on in the world. And, and so you, it's easy to get distracted all the time. You know, and again, this is something that's different from the 80s and 90s to now, right? Yeah. I mean, the, just the amount of information that we have all the time, it's very easy to get sidetracked. And so blocking out that time, is it okay to check social media? Well, yeah, right? But just block out a time, set a timer, and when the time is up, you're done. And like you said, if you can't handle the timer, then build it into your phone, right? Because there are apps that will lock you out. Um, the other thing, you know, that I've found too is, is, is schedule certain time and just block it out during the day for certain activities. So this is one that I, I hear from a lot of people is about email and how they're just constantly, you know, checking email all the time. And so again, the same thing, I've done some self-reflection on myself. And what I usually like to do is I only check email once or twice a day uh, and, and respond. And so I try to block out some time because if not, then I constantly see the dings of the stuff coming in and I, and I move from whatever I'm focused on to, oh, well, let me just check and see who sent that. Oh, no, it was just another you know, coupon for some retailer that I'm never going to go to. <laughs> right. Okay, I just wasted 10 seconds of my life. But it's not the 10 seconds, it's that you moved your focus of energy away, you derailed yourself, you derailed yourself from what you were doing. And yep. so having these bursts of, of like severe productivity is so much better uh, than trying to do the grind. And so again, you can, you can use reward mechanisms to help you with this, right? If I spend 10 minutes or 15 minutes and just immerse myself in this particular activity I have to do today, then hey, at the end of the 15 minutes, I get rewarded, right? I get to get up and go look out the window. I don't know, some, mm -hmm. something um, to help kind of reward yourself for, for doing that activity. You know, and there's other things too, because I used to, um, I could just sit here in my chair and work like all day long sometimes. I, I get kind yep. of engrossed in it. And so one of the things on my watch is it reminds me to stand up. I have stand stand goals right on my watch so that at least 12 out of the you know 18 16 hours that I'm awake that I actually stand up and move around for at least 1 minute. Yep. And um so that that to me has been a great thing too because you know if not again we end up getting locked in. And so here's a simple thing too right is my neck and my shoulders hurt less when I get up every half hour or hour and move around and maybe stretch a little bit than if I just sit in my chair yeah. for six hours. Right? Yeah. Well, and studies show that when we take breaks, we're actually more productive, we're more focused. And remember in grade school, they would put the board up with everybody's names and you'd get those different colored little foil stars. Mm -hmm. Everyone loved getting gold stars. Everyone loved getting that list of stars. And I have clients who um, exercise is not their favorite thing movement is not their favorite thing. And so on their calendar, they put a sticker for every day that they go for their walk. And she gets so excited and she buys different stickers. She has like Halloween stickers, she has Easter stickers and she, you know, you know kitties and turtles and, you know, she just goes crazy buying these fun stickers because that actually motivates her because she wants to see a lot of stickers on that calendar and she gets excited picking the sticker and, you know, it's become this whole ritual for her, but it's fueling her and moving forward and it, yeah, it takes a half hour to 45 minutes to an hour a day, but it makes her so much more productive, focused, and in that zone. And when we get in that zone, <laughs> that flow that is so fabulous when we're in it, we can keep tapping into that with our time management and, 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 and maximize that productivity when we have it. Yeah. And, and again, I think knowing when that flow time is for you, when that optimal time is for you is, is important. And also we tend to under or overestimate how long something's going to take. 
-hmm. So I think, you know, there's people like, I got a half an hour, I'm going to do this big thing. And suddenly they set off on this gigantic momentous task. And then they realize a half hour is not enough, but they only had a half an hour before they had to pick their kids up. So suddenly they're halfway through this thing or it's done half-assed and they have to abandon it. So I think really taking that moment to say, look, what are the components involved in this? How long is this going to take? Realistically, can I get this done in time or can I pause it and come back to it later or is that going to mess it up? Yeah. Um, I think it's also, you know, that awareness, that self-awareness and that task awareness is key to the time management aspect of this. Well, because you bring up an inter- a, a good point because we, we tend to under as, or we, sorry, I said that wrong. Let me, let me get this right. <laughs> we overestimate what we can accomplish in any given day. Mm-hmm. but we underestimate what we can accomplish in a month or a year. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. And so, so that's why I find myself doing this. I, I expect or think that, you know, I'm, I'm superhero, right? I can, I can do all these things in one day and, and sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but, but it's, it's blocking out the time uh, for those important tasks. And so, uh, you know, again, back from the eighties and nineties, one of the books that I read was, uh, you know, uh, uh, Franklin or uh, Stephen Covey, you know, the seven habits of highly effective people. And, yes. and in there, it's kind of the first things first thing, you know, and he used the idea of big rocks that you yes. think about those things in your life that are most important, those big things that you need to do. And then you've got to, you block out the time for that. And then you let all the other little things kind of fill, fill in the space. So let social media fill in the space instead of taking a big block of time as an example. And so you've literally got to sit down and block out or hold on your calendar time for, Hey, you know, today we're, we're recording a podcast episode. I better put that on my calendar so that I know and that nothing else gets scheduled there and that I'm present. I'm present here for the time while we're recording this, right? I'm not trying to multitask because multitasking also increases your stress. Mm -hmm. And not only increases your stress, it actually makes you stupider, right? They've (laughs) they've done studies, right? Where they'll look at, they'll they'll give an IQ test to somebody, then they'll have a multitask and they score like 10 or 15 points lower after doing the multitasking for a little bit of time. I want to speak to multitasking for a second. I love multitasking. And here's how I multitask. And I realize I don't know that what I do is actually multitasking. Someone asked me this at one of my last talks about multitasking and saying how women tend to be better at it than men, which is true. I believe they are. Because I, as a man, I have difficulty. <laughs> well, I just say, okay, you're about to take a drink, so I won't talk because I don't want you to get distracted. <laughs> Forget, forget where to actually put it. Does it go in my ear or my mouth? Yeah. I put it in the mouth. Um, but what I realized that I do is, and this drives my husband crazy, I'll have six things going at once, almost like a round robin buffet. And I will get this part done and I'll realize, oh, I need to go turn on the printer. Go in the room, turn on the printer and go, oh, there's a thing I wanted to write down. And then I'll move into the other room and go, oh, I was going to fold those socks. Do, 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 do. So... I'm multitasking, except that I am present singularly with each activity. Mm -hmm. I am not trying to do three things simultaneously. I'm doing them sequentially. And when I suddenly realized that, and I was explaining that to this group of people, you could see everyone going, yeah, because some people do one thing and finish it. Mm -hmm. Then they go do the next thing and finish it. I tend to be one of those little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. But by the time I get around the house, I have finished all those things. Um, So figure out how you work. (laughs) If you are a, don't bother me, I need three hours in solitude to finish this thing, make sure that's known to everybody around you so that they aren't interrupting you, so they aren't throwing other tasks at you. And if you're the hunt and peck kind of person like I am, and I'm productive, so it seems to work for me, wouldn't work for everybody, but know which style you are and embrace that. Do what works for you. And if you're in, an, in an, a house or an office with other people and you need that time to do your thing, tell them, 
Mm -hmm. Just communicate with them because it's going to drive you crazy if they're interrupting you every five minutes. So that goes to the communication and the time management, which is if you're needing that time and you're being interrupted, you're not going to be very productive. So know how you need it. And then like, I would say, communicate that to people. Well, yeah. And I think the important thing that you brought up was that even though you're doing it sequentially, right. That, and then you kind of, you know, it's almost like you're, you're going through all these different little things, but you're coming back, you're present during the activity that you're working on. And I think that that's, that's where the important thing is the difference between multitasking, you know, as opposed to if I'm sitting here trying to talk to you, but I'm thinking about, you know, this thing on my phone over here as I'm doing this and oh my gosh, you know, scrolling through this. Right. Um, Because by doing that, you, you can't ever concentrate or focus on where you need to go. Now um, I do some, maybe what some might consider multitasking, but you know, like when I when I go out for a run, I'll actually listen to an audiobook or a podcast, right? So I'm I'm able to do two things at once effectively, uh, you know. But when I'm when I'm running necessarily, I don't have to. My my brain activity doesn't have to be on footstep, 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 right? And so I can. <laughs> And Some, breathing and so, heart beating, heart beating, run, run, heart run. Heartbeat, heartbeat, heartbeat. Here we go, here we go, right? Um, so that, would suck. Just, that would be taxing, right? I mean, if we had to remind ourselves to have our heart beat, I'm glad that's an involuntary reaction. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, in, in, in times like that, it, it's okay. But again, then I get kind of immersed into... Uh, into what I'm listening to and try not to let my mind wander or, or worry about things in the past or things in the future, focus on, on really the activities that you're, that you're doing and just knock it out, get it done. Yep. And, and especially, um, cause I, I find I'm still, I'm still guilty of this too, that there's, there's a lot of times when there's something that we know we need to do and damn it, we just don't want to do it. Right. And um, so Brian Tracy talks about, he had a, wrote a book called Eat That Frog, right? And it, it, it actually, it seems a little weird, but it refers back to like the story that Mark Twain actually did about, about frogs. But what Brian's point was is if you need to eat frogs in the morning, then how you do that is you find the biggest, ugliest, nastiest looking one and you eat it first. Because after that, the rest of the day gets better. So again, kind of from a time management or priority standpoint, if you know there's certain things that are kind of hanging over your head that you know you have to get done, do it first, right? Because the, the longer you wait, the more you will dread having to do that. The more you will think about it, the more negative energy that's going to come in. Just do it first and the rest of the day is going to get better. Yep. That's brilliant. And it's, it's interesting. Like I said, I'm in this NLP course and one of the NLP exercises was um, put, putting a picture out there of that thing you have to do that you don't want to do. Check on health insurance, start taxes. Not that I don't want to do either of those two things, but not that I have to do either of those things. No, I know I do have to do those things and I'm dreading it, but put, put that out there, put it far away and dissociate from it. So you see yourself doing that thing out of the picture and then take something you really, really love to do, dance class, trapeze, playing music, spending time with your animals, taking a walk, overlay that on top of it with yourself in that scene, feeling how excited you are to be playing that guitar or or running on the beach and then take a little pinhole and start to open up the thing you really like to do so that behind it you can see that thing you're dreading. And it's actually amazing how we start to then transfer that feeling and look forward to doing that thing we said we didn't wanna do. It's this, it's like a screen switch kind of thing. Uh, It's amazing, I've done it a couple of times. It's really pretty incredible. Giving us that motivation to, you know, I thought I didn't want to do that thing, but now I'm actually kind of excited about it. Um, I've done that with events. It's like, oh, I don't really want to go psych yourself up for it. Oh my God, I'm so excited to go to that mixer. I'm going to meet new people and I'm going to, yep. or maybe it's 
dinner with the in-laws or, you know, focus and get yourself jazzed up for it. Talk yourself into be your own cheerleader. Talk yourself into doing that. That's what Navy SEALs do when they train. They focus on all the positives, all those accomplishments. And they're like, yes, I'm going to do my taxes today. And I love organizing that. And the football game is going to be on the background and, you know, whatever it is. I do my taxes to football. It's, it's my, that's my do. <laughs> that's a great way to do it. That's my multitask is I have the football game on. I can yell and scream at the TV and yell and scream at my taxes. It's, you know, it's, it saves me. Um, saves me <laughs> yeah. But I mean, jazz yourself up however you want. And there's so many different techniques, you know, like I said, with the screen switch thing with the NLP of getting yourself excited and jazz to do that thing. You don't want to eat the big, ugly frog first. Yeah. So now we got frogs and horses and elephants. Jeez. <laughs> uh, what else are we, should we talk about unicorns? Oh, um, yeah, let's talk about unicorns. Some, at some point, we'll talk about <laughs> unicorns probably too, right? Um, but yeah, so, you know, and, and, and when you do that, when you, when you get yourself jazzed up, you get excited about, you know, and you're, and you're in that, that positive state of mind, it, it, it's going to make it easier, you know, because the other thing that you, that you can do is, you know, you talked about like the NLP thing and similar to that is almost like gating uh, concept like in parenting called gating. Right where you um, you gate the the child, right? You, you are the one that can open the gate. If you want what's on the other side of the gate, once you do this thing, it opens it up to the potential of what you're looking for. And so, what I try to do for myself is reward myself after I eat that big frog, right? Yeah. So, whatever that reward might be, um, you know, to try to do that and help you get through it, and then just focus on it and get it done. Um, another, another thought, you know, too, to kind of throw in here that, that helps as well is, um, planning tomorrow today. And so, you know, if you can take a few minutes at the end of the day and think about what you're going to do tomorrow, um, you know, reorganize the day. And so, you know, when you come in, uh, exactly what you're going to do. So the days when I'm most productive, I've done that. I've, I've planned tomorrow today. I get up in the morning, I go through my morning routine and boom, you know, when I get started at seven 30 or eight, I know exactly what I'm doing. And I'm just, I get in that flow and I just kind of go through my day. Uh, it's when things kind of get thrown in, in there, uh, that again, that stress and everything else kind of starts coming into it and we get pulled in different directions. And all of a sudden at the end of the day, we're going, I am so worn out. I am so tired. Right. And it's because again, your body and your mind have been pulled in so many different directions during the day. It's exhausting to do that. Right. Better to have short bursts of high productivity during the day than to be pulled every, every which way. Yeah. So I had a client at the end of the day, she would shut off her computer. She put everything away. She'd clean up everything. And then she would leave that list of things she had to do the next morning so that when she got there, she was set and ready to go. And I know sometimes it's hard, you know, so many people watching this and you and I, we have offices in our home. When is the day over? And I had a dear friend that used to had an office in his house. He would wake up in the morning. He'd have his morning routine. He would leave the house, walk around the block and show up at his office <laughs> go in there. He would work for the day. At the end of the day, he'd close that all up. He would leave his office, walk around the block and show up back at home. And that was one of the most productive things for him because he wasn't doing these dribs and drabs of I'm working at midnight. You know, it was, that was his dedicated work day. And that was one, that's one of the most brilliant things, especially for people like us who are self-employed or entrepreneurs or whatever, where you're living in your workspace yeah. or working in your living space to have those clear boundaries and those clear delineations of this is work, this is home. Um, and I think that's, you know, in the interest of time management, we're winding down our time. So any final thoughts or any recap you want to throw on this, Jason? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, so, so again, you know, if, uh, a lot of people are feeling the stress because you're getting pulled everywhere. We'll stop and actually do some time management, you know, along with this, some of the things that we talked about, you know, of trying to, to focus and be present on the particular activity that you're doing. Right, taking breaks for yourself so that you can be more productive. Uh, planning tomorrow today, and thinking about again, you know, if there's some big ugly frog that needs to get eaten in the morning, do it first, so yeah. that you 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 let that go, and the rest of the day is going to be better. You've accomplished something, and whew, it's good to go. 
And again, like I said, you know, if you're working at home, try to figure out what those boundaries are be, can be so that, you know, you stop at a particular time. And so maybe again, as part of planning your day is I'm going to finish at five or I'm going to finish maybe at seven or eight this night because it's going to be a longer work day But set that time, get up, shut off the light and walk out the door at the end of the day and start tomorrow off to a great start. Yeah. And just to recap, we talked about horses, elephants, frogs, and unicorns. <laughs> and unicorns so as well. There you, we go. For those of you keeping track of the animals that we've been mentioning, <laughs> we got four in this episode. That's so pretty good. That's pretty I think good. that's pretty good. That's that's a record for us. So right. uh, go forth, eat your elephants and your frogs. <laughs> Don't eat the unicorns. They're, they're in danger. No, they're so um, I'm Kathy Groover and I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. Thanks for Look listening. See you next time. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.